So I probably should have mentioned this at the end of the last video. I guess it makes sense to do it now. Um, we're going to define uh, these two terms, converge and diverge, uh, when it comes to improper integrals. Uh, it, so if a limit exists, that means if we get a number for an answer, you know, like 10, then we say the improper integral converges. Uh, if we do not get a finite, so like a finite value would mean you converge. Uh, if that's not the case, so if you get infinity, um, then we say that the integral diverges. And I think a lot of students kind of like, they get the, that language, converge, diverge, um, where just the roots of that word would mean, hey, you know, even though this is stretched out infinitely far, this area, if we were to push it back in from infinity, we could, you know, fit it into a just a finite little space. So it converges, like it all kind of gathers together. If it diverges, that means there's just an infinite amount of area and you can't gather it all up. Okay, so um, in your homework, you know, you might see, hey, you know, take a look at this improper integral and then there might be like that follow-up question, does it converge or does it diverge? And so you'll know, okay, if I ever I get a finite value, that means it converges. If I get infinity or negative infinity, then I know it diverges. All right, let's check out uh, the next example here. And I'll try not to show you too much here in my notes. All right, um, let's do this one. That last interval, um, integral, um, required integration by parts, but not everything is going to need that. Some of these are fairly straightforward and a lot quicker. Um, let's take a look at the integral from negative infinity to 10 for x squared dx. Okay. So our first step is to rewrite it in a more proper form. Uh, there's a couple ways you could do this. Um, I recommend just writing the limit as t approaches negative infinity, and then you go from t to 10. You could also say the limit as t approaches infinity and write a negative t there. You know, it's all going to have the same effect. But I, I feel that this is a little bit easier. I don't have to keep track of a negative sign later. Okay. Then, once you have it rewritten with the limit, now we'll take our antiderivative, well, with x squared. It's going to be quite a bit uh, less strenuous. So we got one third x to the third, right? We still got the limit, of course. And we'll draw our line here uh, from t to 10. All right. Then we'll plug in. So limit as t approaches negative infinity. Uh, plugging in the 10, we get 1,000 over 3 minus one third t to the third. OK. Let's see here. As t approaches negative infinity, so if we put a negative infinity in right there, let's see. We'd have negative infinity to the third. Well, that would still be negative infinity. But then we're going to multiply that with negative one third. So that's going to change it back to positive and 1,000 over 3 plus infinity. Um, and okay, we've got it, got it there. It's going to be infinity. And so if there was that follow up question here, uh, we would say this integral diverges. Now this answer makes a lot of sense when you think about the graph, right? Our function is x squared, so we got x squared, and we're taking all of the area from negative infinity to 10. So all of this, all the way up to 10. Okay, well there's a finite amount of area there, but back here, I mean that's just growing bigger and bigger and bigger. Of course, it's an infinite amount of area. And you can imagine in another situation, right, if that infinite area is below the x-axis, then your answer would be negative infinity. But here it's above, so there you go. Okay. Moving on. Let's try some of that other variety where the function is not continuous. Okay, so this is not quite clear. Let me rewrite that a little bit sharper, I hope. All right. Uh, this, oh, we saw this one at the beginning. Um, the integral from 0 to 4 
1 over the square root of x dx. Now these can be sneaky because you know you got to look carefully. Um, oh yeah, that's not that function is not continuous at zero. So actually, this is an improper integral. It's really easy to spot the infinities, right? <laughs> zero to infinity, right? But zero to four, you got to look a bit closer. Okay. So what are we going to do? Well, first thing is to rewrite it with a limit. And again, you got to be a little bit more careful. So here's what we're going to do. So we're going to put the t in for where it's not continuous. So we'll say t to 4. The limit is not simply t approaches 0. When you approach a number like this, you got to specify, are we approaching from the left or from the right? Well, if the 0 is on the lower limit, then we're approaching it from the right. You know, it's like we're saying from 0 to 4, right? So we're approaching 0 this way, and we're approaching 4 that way. You know, from the inside pushing out. So we're approaching 0 from the right. Now the 4 we're able to just plug in, so we don't, we don't need a limit there. But since we cannot actually plug the 0 in, that's, that's the, the case for the limit. Okay. And then we'll just go about this, you know, uh, antiderivative, you know, whatever, whatever it needs. And here, you know, it's, it's not too bad. Uh, we'll think of it as x to the negative one half, right, from t to 4. And then antiderivative will be 2x to the 1 half with the line t to 4 limit as t approaches 0 from the right. And we'll go about plugging these in. And you see my drawing kind of being revealed over this way. So plugging in the 4 uh, would be 2 times 2. Gives you 4. And plugging in the t, so minus 2. I'm just going to go back to the square root because that's a bit easier for me to think about instead of the 1 half power. I kind of like that. Minus 2 square root t. And finally, once those are plugged in, now we're going to evaluate that limit. And well, approaching 0 from the right perfect. Um, I can actually only take the limit to zero from the right for a square root since it does not exist from the left. Um, so that's great. So that works out nicely. So that's going to go to zero. And my answer here, well, four minus zero is four. And we would say this integral converges. Now this answer, um, any, any answer where it converges for an improper integral is really curious. Um, and so I like to kind of explore these. So I've got the graph here of 1 over square root x. Right? It's got a vertical asymptote there at the y-axis. We're saying, OK, everything from 0 you know, to 4. Well, OK, 4 is fine, but, but wait a second. Like, it never gets to 0. There's an asymptote there. But it turns out, very similar to that first example we did, part A, even though this goes up and up and up forever, we still have a finite answer. So a finite area got stretched out over an infinite space. You know, I kind of imagine, you know, um, my son likes playing with silly putty sometimes. And so, uh, you know, you can roll it up in a ball and it'll bounce. It's kind of cool. Okay, but you can stretch that silly putty out really far. So it's like you just keep stretching it out a little bit further and thinner, thinner and further. And you just, you can just keep going forever. Now, you know, with something physical, eventually the atoms, right? It's going to be like just an atom chain and you can't go any further. But not the case with, you know, um, just conceptual areas, right? You can keep stretching that out. Thinner and thinner. All right, all right. You get it. I got just one more example for us. It's good to see a case like this. Wow. We're going for it here. Um, integral 
from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, and it's e to the x over 1 plus e to the 2x dx. Pretty cool. Well, what's this going to be like? Okay. Now, definitely something new happening here when we have negative infinity and positive infinity, right, for both the lower and upper limit. So we'll need to take two limits, right? One as maybe t approaches negative infinity and another as t approaches positive infinity. But we can't, we can't do the same limit, you know, like, you know, at, we can't do two limits at the same time, right? We can only do one limit at a time. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to split the integral at a convenient x value. So somewhere between negative infinity and infinity, which leaves a lot of room for choices, somewhere between those, we're going to divide this and make it two separate integrals. And I say at a convenient x value because, well, some choices to split it are going to be quite a bit easier to work with than others. At this point, I typically ask a classroom hey, maybe what's a good value somewhere between negative infinity and positive infinity? What would be a good value to, to split this integral? And people say zero. It's usually uh, the unanimous response I get. So I'm going to just kind of go with that. Um, so here's what it will be. So we'll take the limit as t approaches negative infinity from t to zero. We've got our function dx plus the limit as t approaches positive infinity from 0 to t. It's okay if you use t both times. You know, this one pertains to that, this one pertains to that, and they're not, you know, interfering with one another. So t to positive infinity, 0 to t, same function. Now, even though uh, we have two separate integrals here, they're the same function. So it's it's the same antiderivative for each one. So although it's we're making two integrals, it's still just one antiderivative we need to get all right um, which leads to the next point right what how are we going to approach this particular antiderivative right, like is it is it by parts is it partial fractions trig sub trig integral right okay no it's it's just a u sub and maybe you uh you recognize that. So I just kind of wrote it off on its to the side. Like, let's let's just write this just as an indefinite integral. You know, just keep our work um, kind of neat and tight. You know, and we don't have to repeat all of this stuff in every line. Like, just kind of do it on the side. So, all right, for that, uh, u is going to equal e to the x. Because then du will be e to the x dx, which will take care of, you know, that e to the x. Um, so when you look at e to the two e to the two x, right? Think of that as e to the x squared. Okay, so then this u and this du would all fit, and we'd have one over one plus u squared du, and we recognize that to be arctan or inverse tangent, however you would like to write it, either arctan or tangent with a little negative 1, um, u plus c, so that's arctan e to the x plus c, kind of nifty. All right, so that's the antiderivative for both, so let's see, let's kind of pick it up where we left off. We've got the limit as t approaches negative infinity, arctan e to the x from t to 0, plus the limit as t goes to positive infinity, arctan e to the x from 0 to t. And we're like, okay, are we going to be able to wrap our heads around these limits, right? Are we going to need a L'Hopital's rule? Actually, here we don't. Next step, of course, is to plug in. Uh, we got two of them, so uh, let's see. Beginning here, plugging in the 0. Well, e to the 0 is 1, so arctan 1. And the second we plug the t in, so minus arctan e to the t. Plus the limit goes to positive infinity. <laughs> arctan e to the t minus arctan 1, right? They get switched. 0 is definitely a good choice, right? Because e to the 0. You could do it. 
I mean, you could split it somewhere else, but... All right. Hmm, let's see how this thing finishes off. Arctan 1. Will that simplify any further? Yes. Grab your calculator. Arctan 1. Don't give me a decimal here. You guys are better than that. Arctan 1 is pi over 4. Arctan 1 is pi over 4. And that occurs here, and it occurs at the very end. Okay. The tangent of pi over 4 is 1. There's another way to check it. Okay. Let's see how the rest of this worked. Hmm, okay, arctan e to the t. But here, t goes to negative infinity. So let's kind of do it one thing at a time. So e to the negative infinity would be 0. And then arctan 0 is 0. Okay, plus, now this one's a bit harder, t goes to infinity, so e to the infinity is infinity, the arctangent of infinity is pi over 2. All right, now you might not, that might be a little bit harder to grasp. Believe, okay, yeah, so um, I did not make a drawing of it here on my page. Let's explain that. I'm going to draw tangent. I'm just going to draw one period of tangent. And so that's one period, and these are, you know, some vertical asymptotes. Do you remember where these occur, these vertical asymptotes? Pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. So pi over 4 would be right there in the middle, and that turns out to be 1. So there's your arctan 1. You know, if you go backwards. Okay, if this is the graph of tangent, what's the graph of arctangent? This is y equals tangent x. So arctangent, it's the inverse. So you remember you take the mirror image over the diagonal, y equals x. So it's kind of like, you know, kind of like rotate around. It would end up making this shape here. And those vertical asymptotes would become horizontal asymptotes. Hey, where would those occur? Pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. And now maybe this one is clear. What's the arctangent of infinity, right? As this goes out to infinity, arctangent is getting closer to pi over 2. So there's our arctangent e to the t as t approaches infinity, pi over 2. And we could even explain this one, right? Arctangent of 0 is 0. There you go. Okay. So sometimes exploring with a graph, you know, for some of these things is helpful. Definitely in this case. Not always. All right, well, we just got to clean this up. Well, let's see here. Um, pi over 4 minus pi over 4. Will those cancel? Our answer is simply pi over 2. Let's take a look at, you know, let's kind of reflect. Oh, so okay, so that converges. All right. Um, let's reflect here. So the original function was this, e to the x over 1 plus e to the 2x. If you were to graph that, you would get this shape. So there's kind of this bump. So it, it's got this horizontal asymptote in both directions of the x-axis. And then it just kind of does this bump. It comes up to a half there in the middle. So we took all the area from negative infinity to infinity, and we got pi over 2. Isn't that weird? Pi, pi over 2? This It was e to the x over 1 plus e to the 2. How did pi over 2? Well, obviously from the tangent, but uh, who would think that'd be exactly pi over 2 stretched out infinitely far? And, of course, half of it, you know, would be pi over 4. Like, what? A, who would think that? Okay. 
just some last reflections here before we wrap up this section. Um, there was a student very recently who, after we did this problem, said, hey, you know what? You know, I, I see we split it into the two integrals here. And that's a good way to go. But is it possible to only do a single limit and one integral? And I was like, what? No, you can't do that. But then he explained a little further, and I realized he was right. You could. Because it's negative infinity to infinity, we could just do one limit as t approaches infinity and then go negative t to t. And I believe what would happen is um, these pieces, you know, like that pi over 4 and minus pi over 4 just wouldn't be a part of it. Um, and we'd end up with like pi over 2 minus 0, you know, like this part minus this part. And it would, you know, everything would work out just fine. Since now just kind of like here's kind of the point. Um, since there are no discontinuities, right? This one, the only violation is the infinities. But there's no x value where it's discontinuous in between. Now, here's another, a similar example where you would have to split it. And we're not going to do the whole problem, but just so you get an idea. What if you had 1 over x and you were going from negative infinity to infinity? You think, well, everything's okay except at 0, right? So then you got to split it. You got to say negative infinity to 0, 1 over x dx, plus 0 to infinity, 1 over x dx. And there's like both things occurring here. We've got the infinite inter interval on both of them, and you've got a discontinuity. Oh, man. Wow. Okay, so that's, that's really a problem right there. Um, we're not going to do all the details, but just to point out, sometimes... You can actually do something like this with one limit. Other times you, you have to split it. Okay, uh, that's it for 7.8. That's it for Chapter 7. Wow. Uh, good work. Get to the homework. And maybe I'll see you in office hours.